Laurent Thomas, or G as he's known to his teammates, has an all-round ability and personality that's really put him on the map, not only as one of the most talented riders in the pro peloton, but one of the most likeable too. We're here in Wales, in his hometown of Cardiff, to meet the man himself and find out where it all started. I always try and make really bad tea as well though, so people don't ask me to make tea again. Well, you've it's just given tactic. that game away. <laughs> yeah. You must love this area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, just riding my bike around here, like just reminiscing about when I was a kid and, mm. you know, you go over some of the climbs that used to take you like half an hour to go up and, you know, <laughs> take us five minutes now. Mm. And obviously we're at your parents' home. How much support did they give you, like, as a youngster coming into it? You know, at the time you don't really think about it, you just assume, like, oh yeah, you'll take me to Scunthorpe on the weekend, won't you? <laughs> like, I love all sports. So I, I was always involved, whatever gear I did, I was always there. Um, like the first thing I teach my children is how to swim. So I learned to swim because they were involved in it. And I think that's what the same thing happened in cycling. So this is it, the lane where it all started for you. Is this where you learned to ride a bike? Yeah, pretty much. Just uh, up and down here as a kid, you know, wobbling around. Memories. Memories. So on memory lane, where to next? Uh, I guess we should uh, roll down to Mandy and uh, see the track there. Great, let's go. No racing, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit about why we're here, because this is the home of the Mandy Flyers, isn't it? Where everything started, what, at the age of 10? Yeah, yeah, so I was, well, just going swimming in the leisure centre here. Mm. Saw a kids club was uh, just an advert for a kids club starting up and went along. And um, yeah, it all went from there. Just enjoyed it and made some good mates. And yeah, it was just a good laugh. It's changed a lot now, though. So I used to take him down every Thursday. And from that first day, I always said, I'm not, not going to buy you any bikes, I'm not buying you anything because I know what'll happen. You'll take up cycling <laughs> for a couple of weeks and then drop it on. But uh, first year, I just said, no, I won't buy any bikes. That's a nice thing about Mindy, they had bikes there for you. Mm. So you went from there. Yeah, it's just so different, especially then when you're a kid, you know, like cycling was just not really a, well, it wasn't a big sport at all. And, um, yeah, I just remember riding around and the coach shouting to me, oh, can you go faster? And I was like, yeah, 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 and you just start sprinting. And, but yeah, those were the days. <laughs> Every day, you would want to go down cycling. So I, I, more than anything, held him back rather than a lot of parents are trying to push their children on to do more cycling. There's me trying to hold him back, saying, no, we don't overdo it, just keep it level-headed yeah. and just enjoy what you're doing. Um, even like when I was a junior, really, it was just still, um, just a good laugh to go around racing and you know winning some prize money on the weekend and a bit mm. of pocket money. Like especially when we were a youth, it was just uh, we'd go up on a mini bus, travel up to, to races, and you know we'd camp sometimes or you know stay in like these little huts with no heating or anything. But you know, <laughs> it was just like a good laugh, and then you'd obviously race on the Sunday and then come home. And I still don't take it that seriously, really. <laughs> just uh, just enjoy it, don't you? And you train hard and you work hard and. My proudest moment was the first one was when he won the junior track championship. Um, then I knew, okay, he's good. Mm. Um, from here on now, it's important. What we got to do is try and get him into the British cycling team. Um, uh, he's winning all the junior races in Britain. And that's when we decided we'll start going to Europe. So yeah, I was a proud when he won the world junior. That was the first one. And then he won the Paris-Roubaix as a junior. And I thought, you can do it. Mm. From now on, here we go. <laughs> yeah, obviously winning Junior Roubaix was massive. Um, and then to go and get silver in the European points race and then win the Worlds, um, I think that's when I really thought, oh, yeah, I can actually make something of it and, you know, turn pro and, and, and do everything you dream of doing then. Um, until that point, it was just kind of just a, more for fun and more of a, you know, just something you enjoyed doing and I was good at. So, uh, but yeah, that was kind of like the breakthrough year really for myself, mentally, I guess, in a way. Now, I was trying to think back, and I think the last time I properly interviewed you was outside the Barlow World bus in 2007. You had a massive smile on your face. I know you were knackered at that point, but talk me through why that year was so special. Oh, I think, uh, well, it was my first year as a pro. Um, you know, just to be racing in those races was, was massive. And, you know, I was only 20 um, at the start of that year when I turned pro and obviously 20, just turned 21 when I rode the tour. But it was just a big whirlwind of like 
yeah, it's just when you're a kid, that's what you dream of, you know, turning professional and riding the tour and riding the classics. And so, yeah, to be doing that straight away was was unreal. But it's absolutely incredible. And of course, we want to move on to talking about Olympic success for you. But I think we should move on. Where's next? Oh, uh, I guess. Well, talking about the Olympics, we can go to in the centre and have a look at the gold post box that they nicely painted for me. So. <laughs> Brilliant. <A bit> weird. <laughs> Let's head over there now. <laughs> So we're here at your very own Golden Post Box. When you look back, does it feel like a long time since London 2012 now? Yeah, it feels like a lifetime ago. And in terms of it being a home game, did it just feel bigger than anything else? Beijing, we were kind of in our own little bubble and, and didn't really get any sense of it. But I think in London, it was, you know, we're based in here, training in Newport just down the road. And so uh, it certainly, um, it built, you know, the weeks before it and the whole excitement of the games and stuff. So. But for afterwards, I don't think we could really uh, be ready for that, really. It was just nuts. Can you tell me a bit about the transition um, from the road to the track? It's like a completely different discipline now. Um, the track's so fast. It almost like it needs to take a few months preparation just to get back up to speed, really, from the road. You know, like you say, the gearing with, you know, the cadence uh, on the track, you're pedalling over 125 RPM. On the road, you can average maybe 70. Um, on the road, you're, you know, you're racing for six hours. On the track, it's, well, three minutes 51 we did in the final of, of London. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a quite a big change. So, obviously, you've ticked a lot off your list already during your cycling career. But what's next? What you got your eye on? I think just uh, try and improve on the road as, as much as I can, really, and go as far as I can. Obviously, being up there in a classic is, is a huge dream of mine. and um, But also stage racing, seeing how far we can take that as well. So. Um, just keep working hard and keep uh, improving, really. I'm getting on now, though. It's only a few years. I'll be hanging up my wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so next in our little tour of Cardiff, I think you're going to take me somewhere less cycling related. Yeah, yeah. So well, just around the corner is um, Millennium Stadium. So we'll go there and uh, try and get there as much as I can. So we'll go have a look. Yeah, let's check it out. So this is pretty cool. <laughs> Why are we here? <laughs> Well, it's, uh, you know, rugby's obviously massive in, in Wales and, well, since I was a kid, we've always dreamt of uh, playing for Wales in rugby or, you know, you're always watching it on the telly and coming here. Amazing sort of atmosphere here and uh, I always make the effort to come to one of the Autumn Internationals in November time. It kind of makes it a bit more special, you know, when you've got, you got the whole, whole year building up to it, looking forward to going to a game and, um, yeah, like I say, the atmosphere is just incredible and it's just a real good day. Well, talking of special occasions, you're getting married later this year. How much have you been able to be involved with the planning of that again while you're on the road? Uh, it's, it's more how much I'm allowed to be involved with, <laughs> to be honest. It's, uh, it's a lot easier just to step away and let, let the organisation be done. But uh, I've actually recently sorted out the suits and um, went for a food tasting thing. And so I do like the fun bits, really. And did I hear right that Jeff Banks is actually designing your suits for the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he's obviously into his cycling and, uh, you know, has a lot to do with Catford CC and I uh, went to a dinner with him and, and that club and uh, just got chatting and that would be nice for sure. So I think it must have been on Twitter the other day. I saw a picture and you're about this big in your Mandy Flyers kit and you look at a podium of, I don't know, under 12 racers and they're some of the biggest names we see in cycling now. How much talent's come from this area in Wales? Oh, a hell of a lot really, you know, kind of started with Nicole, Nicole when she was doing her thing and um, certainly for me that sort of uh, inspired me in a way really to see, you know, it's, it's not like you're looking at someone in Germany doing well, it's someone that lives 10 miles down the road, you know, it seems a lot more real and achievable. So, um, yeah, and then obviously in Sky, obviously racing with Luke and, um, you know, Paris-Roubaix and things, maybe even the tour this year lining up together. and. Um, that's certainly strange as well, you know. I've, well, I've been in his front room dancing in my underpants, like in front of his mum and <laughs> nan, you know. And then we're lining up in in uh, Roubaix together. So, uh, yeah, it's certainly a, a nice feeling. Strange, you know. Becky James, is Owen Duell and Sam Harrison, and so uh, yeah, it's great to see um, you know so many young guys coming through, and hopefully it just continues to to grow. So. 
Well, of course, a big good luck for your big day and for the rest of the season. Despite the rain, it's been a fun day. Thanks for the tour of Cardiff. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks for Cheers. Uh, coming. Thank you.